Good morning, everyone. And welcome to our Easter Anzac Day service. And we welcome the Aubrey Rovers and the Bandara Rovers from Wodonga. Our opening hymn is Eternal Father, Strong to Save. seated for a moment because today we have hit the trifecta <laughs> yesterday the 23rd of April was St George's Day and St George is the patron saint among others of the scouting movements and we're very pleased to welcome representatives of the first Albury Rovers and the Bandara Rovers Wodonga as part of our celebration today. And of course tomorrow is Anzac Day. So we combine those commemorations with our celebration of the Eucharist on this second Sunday of Easter. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we give each other a Covid-free wave of recognition and sharing of peace greeting. Easter proclaims the victory of life over death and of peace over war. We are increasingly aware of the continuing human cost of conflict and war across the world. We give thanks for the scouting movement and all those who are committed 
to respect the service of our community. We acknowledge the first people of this land and all who call Australia home. We give thanks for God's loving care for families across the world and ask God's special blessing and protection for those who are in our hearts. Amen. Amen. As we pray for peace to rule in our hearts, we open our hearts to God. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we remember Christ and his friends sharing the message of hope, we ask for his gifts of forgiveness, healing and strength. May God forgive us, Christ renew us, and the Spirit enable us to live in love. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Collect for Peace. Gracious God, the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend your children against all assaults of their enemies and establish your kingdom of peace, justice and love. Amen. Amen. Father, you gather us together that we may celebrate Jesus Christ, the living one, who has conquered death. Breathe on us your life-giving spirit and send us out into the world that we may proclaim the risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, our ruler and guide, in whose hands are the destinies of this and every nation, we give you thanks for the freedoms we enjoy in this land, and for those who laid down their lives to defend them. We pray that we and all the people of Australia, gratefully remembering their courage and their sacrifice, may have the grace to live in a spirit of justice, of generosity and of peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. 
We perhaps know little about St. George, other than that he founded a famous footy team and a bank. But what is the story of St. George, the patron saint of many different countries and particularly of scouting? The legend goes that George was a son of a nobleman in the Roman army and became a cavalry officer. George became a Christian and decided to leave the army and travel to the palace of the emperor Diocletian to plead with him to stop his cruel persecution of Christians. As he rode on his horse through Silene, which is in present-day Libya. He found that one of the cities was plagued by an evil dragon that lurked in a swamp. This terrifying creature could only be pacified by feeding it with human bodies, and every day one of the citizens was chosen by drawing lots and was sacrificed. The king's own daughter, Cleolinda, was going to be the victim on the day that George arrived. He hurried to help her, even though his only weapon was a spear. With awesome courage, he charged on his horse, knowing that he had only one shot at killing the fire-breathing dragon. He succeeded and saved the princess's life. After talking to George, the grateful king, the princess, and many of the people decided to become Christians. George continued his original journey to the emperor's palace, but Diocletian had him put to death on the 23rd of April, AD 303 for his Christian faith. Baden Powell chose St. George to be the movement's patron saint because he felt the qualities of the legendary Roman soldier were the same qualities that reflect a good scout. He said, when he was faced by a difficulty or danger, however great it appeared, even in the shape of a dragon, he did not avoid it or fear it, but went at it with all the power he could. This is exactly the way we should face a difficulty or danger, no matter how great or how terrifying it may appear. We should go at it boldly and confidently, using every power that we can to try and overcome it, and the probability is that we will succeed. I'm going to use the Archbishop's Prayer for St. George. Heavenly Father, give us the bravery of St. George to stand up for the truth and the glory of God that we have seen in the face of Jesus Christ. Give us the strength to overcome in our lives and in the world all that is contrary to your rule of justice and love. Help us to be good news to the poor, proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind. Let the oppressed go free and proclaim the good news of God's favour and jubilee. Amen. Now our representatives from the Rover Scout units are going to lead us in the responsive reading from St Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God, so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, 
against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Put on the arm of God. Therefore, put the full armour of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then, with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up, to the, sh take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, and pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Put on the armour of God. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the choir will lead us in the singing of Psalm 46. And we stand, if you are able, as we welcome the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory be to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. 
Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. For the Gospel, the good news of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! Please be seated. Security and especially home security systems have become big business in our present day world. Some of us would have grown up in an era when houses were never locked but not so today, especially in our metropolitan areas where street after, dis street, after street display bars on the windows of houses, heavy steel security doors, burglar alarms, closed circuit television systems, deadbolts, chains, alarms and guard dogs have become the rule rather than the exception. We live in a world dominated, it seems, by fear. Barricaded doors are an outward sign of inner fears. And today's gospel begins with an incident involving a locked door. The disciples were back in the upper room and had the door locked for fear of the Jews. And their fears were understandable, for only a few days earlier they had seen their master taken, beaten and cruelly killed. 
and they had fears that similar fates might await them. So they locked the door to avoid trouble and recrimination. Fear protected them from their enemies, but it also cut them off from the joy and fellowship and mission that Jesus had given them. For with locked doors there could be no preaching, no teaching, no healing, no witness to the resurrection. Centuries have passed but fear still can lock the door on Christian lives and threaten to snuff out the mission of the church. We might fear a world increasingly antagonistic towards Christianity. Not just church vandalism and theft, but also in the way Christians are depicted in the media and in the extremes to which separation of church and state is interpreted. We may fear tension at home or in the workplace with those who don't share our beliefs. And so we keep a low profile about Jesus Christ and what he means to us. But ultimately, I would like to suggest that we are afraid of losing our own lives to the Holy Spirit. We bear the name of Jesus Christ, but we lock and bolt the door after the resurrection, afraid of God's future and what it may have to do with us. But God does not leave us alone behind the barricades we erect. Jesus did not force his way into that upper room. He appeared in the disciples' midst and his first words were, Peace be with you. Peace or Shalom, was and still is a common Jewish greeting, rich in meaning. It means not just the absence of trouble or the removal of threat. It includes the idea of total well-being, physical and spiritual. And when spoken by Jesus, it meant even more than that. It was a heartwarming, faith-restoring gift from him to them. The peace he brought was the peace he established by his death on the cross. It was peace in the sense of a victory over Satan over sin and over death. It was a peace that was secure in the midst of danger, a peace that could never be taken away from them. The very next words Jesus spoke were a commission. As the Father sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. The invitation to receive the Spirit comes right after their commissioning because it's impossible to do one without the other. It was Christ's Spirit breathed upon them that set them free from the safe but stagnant upper room to go out and start being the church. They witnessed, they healed, they exhorted, and they did wonders in the name of the risen Lord 
and the church increased daily. Now they knew the security and the freedom of being under God's control. We gather today as disciples of the Christ who conquered death. Our Lord promises that where two or three are gathered in his name, he is there. And his words to us are still the same. Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. Some say yes daily to God's gracious invitation and it shows in their words and actions. Others have said yes and meant it sometime in the past. But the fear or love of this present world has gradually closed the door on his spirit and that too shows but God's word is the same to all receive the Holy Spirit and he will replace your fear of those outside the upper room with the power to transform them receive the Holy Spirit and you shall be witnesses of the resurrection to the ends of the earth. Which will we choose? The closed doors of an upper room or hearts open to the gifts of the Spirit? Suffocating in our own defences or drawing the breath of life from God. Will our lives be spent making disciples or making excuses? <coughs> and what of Thomas in this gospel account? He's sometimes referred to as doubting Thomas, isn't he? But I think it's a bit more than that. It's almost the unbelieving Thomas. He doesn't merely ask for satisfactory evidence of Christ's appearance. He prescribes the conditions that would have to be met before he would change his opinion. Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails and place my finger in the mark of the nails and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. But the greeting of the risen Lord, peace be with you, and his appearance, changed this disbelieving disciple into a rapturous confessor. Jesus used Thomas's own words in a loving rebuke and yet invitation. <coughs> Put your finger here and see my hands. Put out your hand and place it in my side. Don't be faithless, but believe it. The heart of Christianity is not the acceptance of a series of religious propositions or dogma, but trust in a person, trust in Jesus Christ. We respond to facts and statements with intellectual assent or acceptance, but to a person, we respond with warmth, love, confidence and trust. When Thomas was confronted with Jesus as a person, that was enough for him. He didn't need to probe and test any further. He now was sure without further proof and he showed that by the way he responded. 
my Lord and my God, was the response of a person who henceforth would devote his life to the risen Lord. It was a confession of faith. True, he made it before a person whom at that moment he could actually see, but in confessing him to be his God, he was stating that which was not immediately obvious. And our relationship to Jesus, likewise, is always a matter of faith and trust. And such faith and trust shouldn't need proof. Because if proof exists, surely it is no longer faith. The trust that we have responds to the marvellous offer of peace that our Lord brings us. He established peace between humankind and God by his death on the cross. And as the risen Christ, he offers this peace to us. Jesus says, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. So greet the risen Christ with joy. Receive the peace that comes from him and go forward in the power of his spirit to love and serve the Lord. Amen. And as we always do, we pray for Ukraine, for its people, and for those who are suffering. God of peace and justice, we pray for the people of Ukraine today. We pray for peace and the laying down of weapons. We pray for all those who fear for tomorrow, that your spirit of comfort would draw near to them. We pray for those with power over war or peace, for wisdom, discernment, and compassion to guide their decisions. Above all, we pray for all your precious children at risk and in fear that you would hold and protect them. We pray in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. And our pastoral care team leader, Annette, will lead us in our prayers. We give thanks for Christian people working and praying together for peace and for our local faith communities and the words of Pope Francis. Every human being desires communion and peace. Everyone needs peaceful coexistence. But this can grow only when we also build inner peace in our heart. Let us pray for the world God loves through Christ who walks beside us in our journey from darkness to light and from brokenness to peace saying, Lord of compassion, hear Amen. our prayer. We pray for the leaders of the nations, that you will guide them in the way of freedom, justice and truth. We pray for our enemies and those who wish us harm, that you would turn the hearts of all to kindness and friendship. We pray for the wounded and the captive, the grieving and the homeless, that in their trials they may know your love and support. 
Most holy God and Father, hear our prayers for all who strive for peace and fight for justice. Help us who today remember the cost of war to work for a better tomorrow as we commend to you lives lost in terror and conflict. Bring us all at the last to the peace of your presence. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We remember with thanksgiving those who made the supreme sacrifice for us in times of war. We pray that their offering of their lives may not have been in vain. May your grace enable us this day to dedicate ourselves to the cause of justice, freedom and peace and give us the wisdom and strength to build a better world. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. We give thanks for your enfolding love, for the wonder and refreshment we find in children, for the comfort and patience we find in older people, for the courage and friendship we discover in unexpected places, and for the small acts of kindness that make the world of difference. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. Loving God, help us to defend people from prejudice and misunderstanding that we may reflect your welcome to all. You help us to be one in mind, body and spirit. Give to all your children a new heart to reach out in faith, hope and love and to walk gently with others until you bring us all safely home. Lord of compassion, hear our prayer. In the silence of our hearts, we bring before God those in special need or distress, especially any known to us. We pray for those who have recently died and for those who are remembered with love at this time. Rest eternal, grant to them, O Lord, and let the light perpetual shine upon them. This Easter, give us the faith to share your loving care protection and strength, and to find healing, peace and hope. On this coming Anzac Day, give us the faith to share your loving care, protection and strength, and to find healing and hope. We offer our prayers to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We stand for the Offertory him for the healing of the nations.
almost every day, people come to St Matthew's looking for help and assistance, whether it be for food, or clothing, or shelter. And so these gifts that we bring are put to very good use and in the service of God's kingdom. Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also and with you. you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. For you are the hope of the nations, the builder of the city that is yet to come. Your love, made visible in Christ Jesus, brings home the lost, restores the sinner, and gives dignity to the despised. Therefore, with all of your creation, we glorify your name for ever praising you and singing. I'd like to be seated. Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the friendship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Let us pray. 
Pray for peace, justice, and forgiveness as Jesus taught his friends. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This bread is broken into many pieces, but together we share God's love. For we all share in the one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. All are invited to share in this celebration and to receive the communion. We receive it standing at the front here before the altar rail. And you are most welcome to share in that today. For God's love shines for all his people. God welcomes all her children. All are invited, all are welcome. Come.
Let us say together the peace prayer of St. Francis of Assisi. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. Grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it's in giving that we receive, and it's in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it's in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Loving God, show us the way so we might see you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. You send us into the world you love. Give us the grace to go thankfully and in courage in the power of your spirit. Amen. Uh, Victoria will bring us the notices. <laughs> Thank you all for joining us this morning. And a very big thank you to Father Malcolm. <laughs> for a wonderful service this morning, and Father Peter is presently in Melbourne. There are departing offertory bags as you leave, and there's also the tap and go machine at the back of the church. As you are aware, we can't take it up a collection. So as you go, you can um, either tap, it's $20, uh, $10 at a go, and you can tap as many times as you like. And uh, there's also the offertory bag, or you can direct deposit into St Matthew's account, which um, helps us with our mission with the homeless and the, those needing help. Uh, tomorrow is Anzac Day, so of course the office and the op shop are closed. And uh, the closing of the Field of Remembrance over here will be at 11.30 on Tuesday. There's no Wednesday service this week because there's a clergy retreat. And uh, next Sunday, <coughs> excuse me, which is Easter th the 3, is St Matthew's Mini Market Stall and that will follow the service. It's Matthew's Crafts and gift, up, gift Ideas for Mother's Day, a cake stall and a plant stall. And we have bread this, after, bread this morning and it's $2 a loaf, and thanks to Millerwood Red for that. Um, Matthew Paul, could you come forward, please? <laughs> I can't count the number of years Matthew Paul's been here, but it seems like forever. But he is, this is his last Sunday with us. He's off on an adventure. He doesn't know where it's going to take him, but he's off to have a holiday and have an adventure. And we want to thank you, Matthew Paul, for most sincerely for everything you have done for this church. Be it the... He's been the clerk, he's been the caretaker, he's been the verger, he's been the dog's body, he's been the go get the table. He's been everything to this church, and we really do sincerely thank you very much. And go safely. <laughs> thank you, Victoria. Also next Sunday evening, being the first Sunday of the month, we have Evensong at five o'clock, and you're most welcome to come and share in that beautiful service. Traditionally, during the period between Easter and Pentecost, we have sprinkling of holy water as a reminder and a symbol of new life that Christ brings us through his resurrection. And this will take place as we sing our final hymn, so umbrellas up. <laughs>
We thank again at the representatives of the Rover Scouts who have been with us for this service today and we're so pleased that you were able to do that for us and with us. The blessing. May God bless us and hold us close. May the Easter light shine for us and from us and those for whom we pray. And God's love be with us always and give us peace. And the blessing of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us, those whom we love and those for whom we pray, today and always. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we witness the Ukraine National Anthem. Ни слава, ни воля, ще нам братя українці усміхнеться доля, згинуть наші вороженьки, як роса на сонці. Continue to love and serve the Lord. And be to God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. 